What's going on, y'all? So Girl, what's going on? Okay, so we back again for another episode review for Raising Cane and Power Book 3, Season 3, Episode 6, Into the Darkness. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know what was going on last week. I really don't understand when um, Power be taking a break at that one week in between, and this is on all of the Powers. What are you taking a break for? Baby, give us what we looking for. You better be glad we sitting here watching and anticipating. You cannot give us an episode like you gave us two weeks ago, okay? And end it the way that you ended it. And then have us sitting here thinking that power coming on the next week so that we can get into it. Because, baby, we got to realize and see what's going on after all of that stuff just happened. And then for it not to come on. Do you know yes, uh, uh, last week... Last Thursday night, because if you don't know, if you watch it on the app, okay, you watch it on the app, Stars app or whatever, the episode comes on, because originally it comes on on TV on Friday nights, right? But it'll be already up at probably like 11 o'clock on Thursday, 11 o'clock p.m. Thursday night. I'm sitting up in here waiting for it. I'm actually waiting for it. And usually sometimes, girl, I ain't got time to be doing all that because I got other stuff to do when I'm finna go to bed and my mind is just not focused at that time of night. I'm sitting here waiting for it. I'm clicking the stuff and I'm like, why I don't see nothing? I had to go look and they was like, girl, it ain't coming on tonight. I said, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness, are you serious? I was so prepared for it. But baby, we here. And it was a little bit of mess, but it really wasn't. This was a cute episode. Um, all I'm gonna say is Ronnie Myers gotta go. I don't know what his problem is, okay? I don't know what happened to him in prison because I'm pretty sure. He was not like this before they locked his ass up. Like, did somebody try him? Did they try to uh, give him a lobotomy or something? Like, what's going on? Because his whole mental structure, he's just so hard. And, like, the man just won't smile for nothing. The man won't loosen up for nothing. He's so straight-laced. He's so stiff. It's just a lot. And I'm just really confused bad. okay? Like, bruh, bruh. I mean, you ain't got to be so angry like that. You ain't got to be so scary like that to get respect and all that stuff. You scaring away the customers. You scaring away people want to work with you if they do. Like, he the type of person, like, if you get the money that you desiring or whatever it is that you desiring, you're not even going to be happy with it. That's what it gives me, like... You don't give me like, oh my goodness, I'm going to get a wife, I'm going to get a kid, I'm going to get this car, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that. That's what I want this because I want this power. It just looks like it's never going to satisfy him and it's never going to make him smile. I, I just don't understand. This man that came out of prison and still ain't had no yet. <laughs> like, nigga, what is going on? What is happening? Okay, we get up into the episode and <clears throat> we see Rock. Rock is coming home from wherever she coming home from, right? And she parked her car down the street because, baby, listen, she got to um, make sure people ain't uh, uh, following her. But somebody is watching her. I'm thinking, oh, the fans ain't got your ass. No, no, not them. Not tonight. Not tonight. But when she get up in the car, uh, uh, get up onto her little uh, step and everything in front of her door, she looking around, looking around. We see the camera pan out, and we see this car down the block, okay? And I said, oh, who is that? Rock get up in her house, and she manning her business, probably finna fix her little something to eat or whatever, and we get this knock on the door. Open up the door, bitch. I know you up in there, Rock. Open up the door, Rock. I know you up in there. I said, girl, what? Pronounce her. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Listen, the way, you know, I don't know, rock better than me. And you would you would think given how, you know, cautious she's been or whatever, I would have came to the door with a gun too, okay? Because she just opened up that door and that girl had a gun already. I said, excuse me, this is what we not finna do, okay? Where he at? I know you did something too unique. I know you did something too unique, okay? Why would you do that? I can't stand him and he won't come home and all this stuff. What you do to her? Girl, all I did was fuck him and leave him, okay? That's all it is. Anything else that happened, that is not on me. All right, she needs to go talk to somebody else. Bitch, Rock was looking at her like, listen, you gonna pull that gun. 
you're not going to use it. And at one point, she begged, begged, but then again, she was like, girl, you're not going to use this. Don't pull out something that you know you're not ready to use or whatever. And she started walking towards her, but then Miss Pernessa kind of clicked that, uh, she kind of cocked it a little bit. I said, oh, so we playing clickety-clack with the gun, huh? You really finna do something with this weapon? I said, girl, you shaking. You ain't finna do nothing. I said, but then again, them the ones that accidentally pulled the trigger. Okay, I said, Rock, you need to go to the side. Go to the side just a little bit, all right? But next thing you know, Rock clocked that bitch and got the gun out of hand. I said, oh, <laughs> y'all starting off stupid already. I said, I know that's right. Get that gun out of her hand. And at that point, I, <laughs> listen. We wind up seeing them later after that scene. The next scene we see with Rock, Pernessa is sitting at the uh, counter, whatever, with her. And she, 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 she giving her some ice, or whatever, to put on her little bruised eye and all that stuff after, you know, Rock then clocked her ass, okay? But here's the thing. They're commiserating with each other. And I said, wait a minute, you come to my door with a gun and you threatening to shoot me because you don't know where your nigga at? And we going to sit here and we going to talk about it like women because we both was fucking that man and we both got feelings for that man. Even if one really don't want to, um, you know, admit to it. Baby, please. Listen, Pernessa, I'm sorry. I would have had to give you a flesh wound. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, y'all. Listen, I know you are hurting because that's the love of your life. Okay, that's your baby daddy. Y'all got years in the game and all that stuff. You've been by that nigga side through and through, even when he was doing you wrong. Understandable, understandable. You just found out that Rock the Enemy was messing with your man and that he was willingly going over there to her. And now you can't find him. Okay, that's fine or whatever, but what you're not going to do is come to my door and point a gun at me and not going to use that thing and think I'm not going to use it on you. Listen, I understand that you're going through the pain that you're going through or whatever because you don't know where your man at. And 9 out of 10, your man is dead because, like you said, oh, my God, I feel it. I can just feel it. I know that he dead. The police, I mean, he go rock. Have you talked to the police? Nigga, the police don't give a fuck about no unique. Okay, what are you talking about? I said, now, Rock, why would you ask that question? We street niggas. What are we doing with that? Police don't rock with us. Okay, they probably be glad, you know? And at this point, I would have been like, that's cool or whatever, but I still would have had to give you a little flesh room or something. I wouldn't put a bullet bullet in you like that, but I have to let it graze you. I have to let it graze you or something because what you're not going to do is come to my door and put a, put a gun to me, okay? I'm just, listen, fair is fair, okay? We can still talk, but you got to understand the consequences for what you just did, you know? And so at this moment, she was like, you know, he been gone for a week. And, and, and he one thing about it, two things for sure. If he don't call me, he don't, he don't never not call Jerome, the little baby. Girl, listen, Rock said, well, what Ronnie got to say about it? I ain't, that nigga don't say nothing like he always do. He never says anything. And she looked at him like, uh, looked at Pernessa like, girl. And she was like, no, no. Ronnie wouldn't do that. Ronnie wouldn't do that. He loves Unique. That's his little brother. He would do anything. I said, yeah, he'll do anything, including take his ass out. Cain and motherfucking Abel. That's what Cain did. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, girlfriend. Your baby daddy dead. <clears throat> and it's unfortunate. Meanwhile, you got the stuff going on with Famous, Famous up in the um studio, and he doing his little rap, and it was giving very much Scarface uh, and the Ghetto Boys, my mind's playing tricks on me and stuff like that, it was giving me that feel, you know, it was getting deep um, with all of the stuff that's been going on with him, you know, ever since he got locked up, uh, got knocked or whatever for that, um, you know, being out on the street and then he had to talk to the police and then they brought up the Freddie Williams um, murder or whatever and all of that. And then he telling Kanan and all that stuff. And Kanan like, don't you tell nobody about this and you don't speak about it no more, even to me. I said, I, 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 you know, famous. I'm feeling bad for him. Now, at one point in time, I was like, famous, he a goofy ass nigga. Famous need to get the hell up out of here, okay? Like, I, I, I could see him getting killed. I could see him going somewhere and I probably won't feel no way about it. But... I have changed my viewpoint on that. I don't want nothing to happen to him because at this point in time, the boy is going through some things. He is going through some things and he really ain't got nobody on his side. And I really feel bad for him. I really feel bad for him because, you know, he, it, it, it just goes to show that a lot of people, you know, they do use, and I need him to be careful. I need him to be careful. He can't be doing what he doing up in that booth now, okay? He putting all his tails on wax so the cops can use it against them. Y'all been looking at that young thug trial. 
that shit is a pure comedy show. I said, what is going on? It's a shit show for real. But at the same time, you know, he was getting into it, but then he had to stop. Blue like, why you stopping, nigga? You was up in the pocket or whatever. He was like, because I'm scared. And it's just a lie. He was like, you scared because, you know, that's when you know you're getting good or whatever. Go ahead and put what you got to say out there. You need to get that out. And so he winds up doing it or whatever. And then, you know, him and Lou had a little conversation and all this stuff about everything that was going on. He didn't necessarily say all the stuff that was happening, but he did say... He needed to talk about it. It's keeping him up at night. And he was like, it's like the words just jumping out of his head when he opened up his pad to start writing. It's not him writing. It's just like whatever's coming out, it's just coming out automatically without him even thinking about it. And once he put it out there, he feels better. And Lou was like, yeah, that's what you need to do or whatever. Woo, woo, woo. I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for him because... His conscience is playing games with him. It's not just because he took somebody else's life. It's also because he wants to be loyal to his friend. And that's also playing games with him with what Rock did to him, okay? Um, and so he took it upon himself to go tell Kanan what exactly happened. That Rock was the one that put the gun up in his bag. And Kanan, we should have known Kanan was going to get pissed off. Of course, we knew he was going to get pissed off, but baby, I didn't know he was going to go this far. Listen, Kanan is becoming a Kanan that we did not like up in power, okay? Some of y'all may have liked him, but we he is, he, he is in his villain era. He was in a villain era for a while, and he never came out of that bitch. He never came out of that bitch, okay? And this is the start of it. Ever since Rock told that man to try to kill his daddy... <laughs> <laughs> It was it was downhill from there. It was downhill from there. Okay. And so now you got famous telling him, yeah, Rock told me do uh I couldn't say that. Why you ain't tell me nothing about it? Okay, you you let my mother up in here and you knew my mother was the one that did it. I said, yeah, nigga. It was like, but I bet you Rock gave you some money with that. I said, I mean, it's like your loyalty could be brought. He didn't try to give it back, but he didn't want it. And I wish Famous would have been like, listen, I didn't spend it, and here it is right here, whatever. But see, he didn't even give him an opportunity to do that, but I really do think Famous probably did spend it. But then again, as much as the stuff has been playing games with his mind, he probably didn't spend that money. But at the same time, he's trying to be honest with you because he said, you're my brother, and I love you, or whatever. But at the same time, you should know how your mama is, and you should know how Famous is. Famous ain't... Ain't a strong nigga like that. He not going to be like, you know, standing up to rock the way that you standing up to her. Okay? So, to, to get upset, I get it. But to go as far as telling him, nigga, you ain't my brother. You ain't my friend. Get the fuck out. Get your shit and get the fuck out. I said, now, hold the hell on. I paused for a second. I said, now, let me look at the surrounding of the place where they at. I said, now, are you telling him to get out your room at your mama house? No, he's telling Famous to get his shit and get the fuck out of his apartment. Famous apartment. Excuse the fuck out of me. Are you serious? I said, Famous, this is the time where you better say, nigga, what the fuck? This is my place. Okay, you get the fuck out. Okay, like, no, no. And, 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 and what makes me so mad is... Famous got all the opportunity in the world to trick off on Kanan, and he has not done it. He has not done it. And I'm just sitting here like, that's when I started really, really disliking Kanan, okay? Because what you're not going to do is you're not going to do that to that boy. That boy did not do nothing to you like that. He ain't snitch on you when he got locked up or he got knocked or whatever. He ain't do none of that. And like he said, you ain't even check on him. So why the fuck you mad, okay? Meanwhile, we got detective Howard over there. Um, the FBI dude talking to him about, you know, unique and, um, you know, somebody else that's snitching. Wait, bitch, at the end of the day, the FBI people is putting two and two together, okay? They won't give um, Detective Howard too much information, but they still letting him know enough about the fact that even though they interview some interviews, uh, more witnesses or whatever, they don't believe that much about Camacho doing all this stuff by himself. Like, they trying to put it on Crown and all that stuff, um, and they won't let him in on anything else. But at the end, the last time uh, Howard had came down there, they had talked to him. Baby, they said, we looking into somebody else. Who they looking into? Marvin. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not when Marvin trying to get his shit together a little bit. Okay? He trying to be a good daddy and all that. 
And I'm just like, uh. Then you got Detective Howard trying to get the job from this other dude that's gonna retire and leave. And um, he he was the head of nar the narcotics department. And so, you know, he talking to the chief and the chief said, I mean, I guess it'll get you from underneath all that mess that was going on with old girl and all that stuff, your partner. So we do what you gotta do. Speaking of Marvin, I love Marvin. Marvin got to be like one of my favorites on this show, okay? And it did not start off that way, but he has had the best character development of this whole show. It's for real, for real. Um, Because we see the girls doing the butter, okay? They're performing, you know, in front of these, uh, you know, heads of people or whatever. I don't know if they was heads of record, but they was all white. That's all I know. White old men, okay? And... You know, Marvin is sitting over there, and he just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. That's how you supposed to do it, okay? If you going to be around, hype me up, all right? I don't care what nobody say. You going to hype me up. That's how I'm going to do my friends. If I was to have kids, that would have been me. I would have been that parent, okay? That's my motherfucking child right there. Yes, get into it. Oh, my child will hate me. She will hate me. She or he will hate me because we're like, damn, mama, you are embarrassing. You better be glad I'm here doing it, okay? Because I could have just... And that's exactly what happened. Because here come Marvin. Yeah, that's my daughter right there. She the baddest one up in there. She should be the lead singer. She this. She the best singer. She the best dancer. She the best this and all this stuff. Girl. They looking at him like, what? What the fuck? And then it's like, um, at this point, Jukebox is embarrassed and had to take him out and say, you, you embarrassing me. You fucking shit up. Okay? And of course, I'm just like, oh no. Don't mess up y'all relationship or whatever. And so... Oh, excuse me. He wound up going and talking to Gerald about this whole situation, about how he... Well, he actually talked to Lou first, you know. He talked to Lou about it, and, you know, Lou said, don't ever stop trying to be a good dad, because that's what he's trying to do. He he, he feel like he embarrassed and messed up the situation with um Jukebox, but he really didn't, in a sense. Um, He was just being the over... He's being a parent who just got a little overly excited. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and you can't really blame him because, especially given the tumultuous history of them and their relationship, and, 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 and given how a lot of, you will want parents to be that involved or whatever sometimes with your kids or whatever. It's just showing them that they support them. I'm supporting you in your dreams. And that's just basically what we're seeing, right? And so you got that going on. Lou at the bar, making sure everything good and giving him advice to continue to try to be the dad that he is, okay? That's just basically what it is. Uh, uh, what's his name? He went over there to talk to Gerald. And, you know, they commemorated on the whole thing. And then Gerald said, listen, remember when you said doing a piece about Drew Box? I feel like I should do that. I feel like I should do that. I'm going to have to talk to her. I'm going to have to talk to you. Make it like a, um, you know, homie type of feel or whatever. Local feel or whatever. Everybody get to know who she is and all this stuff. Now, baby, why they over there talking and chit-chatting? This dude come over there to um, Marvin and was like, imagine they in the park. And he, uh, Gerald was there with his kids, okay? Because they was talking about, oh, I can't imagine having a teenager and all this stuff. When they become teenagers and all this stuff, Marvin said they're going to be the same way times 10, you know, just... All up in their feelings, uh, all this stuff, whatever, you know, because he got teenagers and all that stuff. He got a teenager. Meanwhile, I do come over there randomly. Some white guy was like, hey, it's you. Remember me? Like, you was over there. You used to be in the back all the time with Tony. I said, bitch, I forgot all about Tony. Tony dead, ain't she? Okay, and he was like, I don't know who you're talking about. I was like, Tony, you used to be in the back in the club all the time with her. Tony, you remember Tony? And he was like, bruh, I told you I don't know who the fuck you are. And I don't know no Tony. So keep going. I feel like um, Gerald was kind of picking up on the picking up. He ain't really saying nothing, but he was looking like he was peeping the scene. And that's when Marvin was like, mm, he one of those white person that think all black people look alike. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, you know. And I feel like the reason why he did all of that was because... Again, Gerald is the type of person who is, he's in entertainment, he's a writer, which means he's a journalist, which means they do research and all he got to do is get a name, 
click, 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 two and two together. We already talking about writing this piece and getting information about y'all so we can put this little homie feel piece in the um, newspaper to get y'all some little recognition for this little group or whatever. So it don't take much for this man to just want to go delve into uh, Marvin and his background and see who the hell a Tony was, okay? It don't take much. It don't take much. Meanwhile, talk about the group again. When I was looking at Rock's Shout out to Rocks. It's Rocks, okay? I T S R O X. Please go over there and um subscribe to her. Because when she was talking about this and when we first got encountered with the um the lady who I guess is the manager of this group that uh Jukebox is in, she called her Pebbles. And I don't know why that hit my funny bones so goddamn hard. But it hit it so hard. And Rox, you look good up in your video. Okay, I love the intro. I love the new intro for the what it is. Uh, uh, not the what it is, but your top of the blinds. Go on over there and give her a little subscribe. I love me some Rox. But bitch, listen. It hit my funny bone so damn hard. And ever since then, that is all that she's been giving me. Okay? Shout out to Rox for putting that connection together. Because they already acted like the group is like a TLC. Because that's how it was back in the day. All these groups was fashioned by, like, by the same formula, right? Miss Girlie is giving it to the girls, okay? She is giving it to the girls like, y'all up here doing all this stuff in front of the peoples. They said one thing that y'all was cute or whatever, but I'm looking at them like, nah, they kind of wrong, okay? The dance moves was sloppy. The singing was sloppy. The formation was sloppy. We ain't got no leader in the group. You got one bitch who think that she deserved to be in and she is it in a done daughter. But she ain't. We got another bitch up in the group. She just feel like she don't get it. And she probably ain't worthy of the spot. And then we got Juju Box. Bitch, we don't need, I don't even know what the hell you think. It was just the way that she was talking. First of all, she was a little bit too animated for me. Uh, and it was comical the way that she was talking to them. I said, girl, you think I'm supposed to be listening to you and be feeling some type of way? Baby, I would laugh in your face if you was really talking to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, make it sound a little bit more real, okay? And I'm sitting here like, well, bitch, if you think they can't do all them dance moves, I want to see you bust an eight count, okay? One, two, three, step your ass right here in front of me since you up here want to tell them what they not doing, okay? But anyway, <clears throat> you know, at one point, Marvin had came back after that, had came back over there and was talking to Jukebox when she was sitting at the table. She was getting ready. Uh, she got a letter from them people. And I think it's the people from the doctors or whatever and the military and all that stuff. Because she hid it real quick when um Marvin came in. And basically was like, you know, Marvin was trying to apologize for embarrassing her. And then she said, I mean, yeah, you did a little bit. But you kind of was right. Because, you know, she probably finna... Um, Try to step up and get that spot to be the main girl. You know what I'm saying? The lead single, whatever. But at one point, it felt like the conversation was going well. And he was just telling her that, you know, I'm just trying to be a good dad. I need you to show me what I need to do to be a dad. And then that kind of turns her off. She was like, you want me to tell you how to be a dad? You know what? I'm going to go to school, okay? i see you later. I said, damn, juke. <laughs> damn, juke. <laughs> I get it, but he trying. He is trying. But also, you want to know who trying to, and it ain't working, and it ain't never going to work no more. The relationship between Rock and Kanan is it's, it's over and it's done with at this point. It's over and it's done with. I don't feel like, I don't know, and I cannot remember if they even said in the original Power, Power Book 1, um, <clears throat> what happened between Kanan and his mama. Um, I know he was in an apartment, and I think that apartment was his grandmother's apartment. You remember? But never said anything about his mother. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. So I need to understand what's going to happen with them. Because he came over there to the crib cussing her ass out about putting that gun up in his bag. And I'm so glad that the social worker who just so happened to be at that door. Because remember she said she was going to be doing random pop-ups, right? She heard them arguing. But she ain't hear exactly what it was about. I said, oh, thank goodness. Because, uh, yeah, it would have been over and done with. And so, you know, she let her in and all that stuff. And, you know, the social worker wanted to talk to Kane about herself or about himself. And um, he wound up telling her some things. And basically, he was making it seem like the relationship is cool. It's just that Rock is a little overbearing, overprotective and all that stuff, which was true. When we first encountered her, that's what it was, you know. Uh, she wanted Kane, Kane in, his, in her sight all the time. And that's what she been doing. And, you know... 
the social worker was okay with it because she said, I wish more parents would be that way, you know, and gave them flying reviews and said, you know, I'm liking what I'm seeing and everything is all to the good. Everything's cool. I'm going to come back. But other than that, everybody's doing well. So, you know, good job. A plus, you know, and at this point after that, bitch, I said, now wait till she go down the block. Wait till she go down the block before you say something, Kana. Kana laid it to her ass like, bitch. What you think this is, okay? You done put my life in jeopardy. You up here trying to do all this stuff to get me to stay with you, and it ain't going to happen, bitch, okay? It was like, I did what I know you're not going to understand it, but I did what I had to do because I love you. You love me? I don't even think you ever know what love is and if you ever loved anybody. I don't like him. I do not like him. And you want to know what's making me mad at this point? Because in this scene, I understand why he pissed off at Rock. And honestly, I get why he's pissed off at Rock in general and don't want nothing to do with her. Okay? She's very manipulative. She's very manipulative. Okay? Get it. Understand it. But you want to know why I don't like him? Why is that accent sounding the way that it sounds? I need my New York people to tell me y'all honest to God opinion about this boy's ex. <laughs> because we all have realized that it has gotten worse in the third season. Okay? It was tolerable. It was noticeable in the first season. It was somewhat tolerable. By the time we got to this third season, baby, we are like, what? <laughs> it is just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. And you want to know who else a lot? I said, Rock, you just lost your boy, okay? You lost your boy because you thought that this was going to get him back on your side, baby. All of this is backfiring. And then you go over there because he pulled up Lou. He said the same way, you know, the only other person I understand is the same way that you did with Lou, okay? She called herself going down there to the club and trying to apologize to Lou that she didn't pop up at his place on the opening night. You know, she didn't tell him why. She just said, why the fuck are you here? Because at the end of the day, you are for yourself, okay? Lou don't want nothing to do with her because Lou blames her for a lot of things that go went on in his life. Lou was like, you my big sister, and you made me do a lot of shit that I did not want to do. And just like Famous got that stuff playing on his mind about what he did, everything that is going on with the killing of D-Wiz, the killing of um Scrap, all that is going and playing minds on mind games on him and weighing him down. Because especially Scrap, when he found out that Scrap had nothing to do with what he was being accused of, you know? And he should have still been there. Rock had got it all the way wrong. And she won't take responsibility for that. But Scrap was his dude, so of course he's going to take responsibility. Or, or not necessarily responsibility, he's going to take it a little bit deep because he was made to kill him. Okay? And... He brought up Ziza and all that stuff. And I said, well, that ain't really had nothing to do with her. And I said, yes, it did because Rock, Rock and the Italians, you know. So, all of this did happen because of Rock. But instead of saying, you know, I get where you're coming from and all this stuff. And he was like, I was a kid. You know, you, you, you made me do all this stuff. And then it's like. Basically, what I'm getting out of Lou is Rock had him up in this game ever since he probably was a teenager, like around Kana age or whatever, taking over instead of just having him do other things and actually be a kid, you know what I'm saying, and living his life that way and following the dreams that he really wanted to follow. Instead, you had him up in this game and you had controlling him and manipulating him and all this stuff, and now you're trying to gaslight the motherfucker and say, basically, you can make your own decision. I ain't make you do nothing. You got to take responsibility for the stuff that you did. I said, bitch, how dare you? <laughs> I see. This is why Lou and Rock is over with too. At one point, I thought we had some hope. I thought it could be a possibility that they could reconcile. Girl, after looking at this thing, hell no. And after looking at this episode, definitely no. I really feel like Rock about to put Lou down. I really feel like Rock about to put him down. Okay, and I hate to say it like that, but that's just what it feel like. After the end of the episode, I said, God damn, Lou, why would you do that? Okay, like I know you pissed and I know you want some shit, but God damn, this ain't the way to go, all right? But, um, yeah, she was like, I just thought that, you know, we could take some time and you probably get back to where we used to be. And he was like, bitch, you could get the fuck up at my place. <laughs> Rock stood there like, really? <laughs> really? I said, I don't know why you thought, like, you talking, people talking to people after not speaking to them for a while and after something real heavy went on between them. 
that initial conversation is not going to make everything good. And you're not going to have the person be like, okay, I forgive you. We cool again. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to take some time to build up to that. She looked at him. She was looking like, I know this motherfucker then. <laughs> I said, girl, turn your little fat ass around and just walk the hell on out. Okay. That's what you need to do at this point. Let him soak in his um misery. Misery. Like he was over there in that studio or whatever, or uh, doing whatever he was doing. He was doing the book. I don't know. All of a sudden he looked over and we see scrap up in the chair playing video game. I said, oh no. And then he drinking drink. I said, oh, put that bottle down, baby boy. Put that bottle down. You know your body can't handle this alcohol no more. You are doing a a lot a lot and you want to know who else is doing a lot ronnie is doing a lot okay it, uh, somebody called him ronnie krueger and i'm like no it's not ronnie krueger you could call him ronnie Voorhees, or you could call him ronnie myers but cougar cougar had way more personality than goddamn ronnie okay and cougar went out of kids after kids and shit like that but he had way more personality Truth be told, regardless of the fact of what he did, and I know it's going to sound some way because y'all know, Freddy Krueger was a child predator, okay? But the way they made that character, that motherfucker was funny to me, okay? He was funny. Out of Jason, Michael, and him, he was funny as hell, okay? Terrible person, but he had a funny personality. Any fucking way, Jason ain't had no personality, that nigga just walked around killing people at cabin at, 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 at Crystal Lake, okay? Because bitch, y'all tried to kill me, so I'm going to take it out on every generation that come. And Michael Myers, he just wanted to kill Lori and everybody in his sight. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it was. And did not run, did not do anything. And that is literally Ronnie. Bitch, Pernessa come up into the crib at one point and see Ronnie taking all of unique stuff and money. His chain, his his jewelry, his money, and everything. And she was like, what you doing? That's your brother. What if he come back? He need his stuff and all that stuff. I said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. I was waiting for Ronnie to say, he not coming back. Okay? Girl, next thing you know, he ain't even had no words to say nothing to her. He just grabbed her, pushed her down on the floor. I said, oh, shit, bitch. There it is. Now, when Rock said Ronnie had to probably do something to her, no, girl, that's his brother. Shit, he love him. He, yeah, love him enough to kill him. You want to know where he took that shit to? He went over there to Juliana place. I did what you said. I said, what did she say? Unique is out the picture, and he ain't coming back. I said, oh, my God. And then when I think about it, and when you listen to the conversation that they had in the last week before, uh, well, the last episode, when she said, because when Ronnie said, Unique, my brother, he ain't going nowhere. Juliana said, well, my husband was my husband until he had to go, too. I said, oh, so basically, you, Ronnie, read between the lines. <laughs> I didn't catch it right away, but I caught it now. And he went over there and said, um, <clears throat> okay. She was like, all right, cool. Well, if we work together, it's just going to be me and you. Nobody can find out about it. So what you want? And he, she, he put that bag on the, that duffel bag on the table. She opened it up and, or he opened it up and she was like, huh? Oh, okay. So how much you want? I said, what? We did a hair on. Next thing you know, he going over there to meet up with Kanan. He won't really meet up with him. He was kind of stalking that motherfucker, okay? Kanan already listened. Kanan gonna have to get rid of Paul. While you up here talking about some, you know, getting cutting off famous and all that stuff, whatever, and cussing him out, you cussing out the wrong light bright, okay? You need to you need to cut uh Paul out the business because Paul is a liability at this point. All right. Now, Kanan was out there trying to figure the stuff out, uh, um, you know, designating where people going to go here. You go there, you go there. This is where you need to go. Paul come out the building. How about son? Kanan, you can't be doing this. Now, I told you I was linking my uh, my dudes or whatever, but you cutting into my business. I can't even get my business together. Baby, Kanan said, first of all, Kanal, they coming to me. They getting paid more. So, of course, they going to come to me. And second of all, you getting paid from the money that I'm giving you, that shouldn't be, you should have no reason to complain about that. He was like, look, dude, 
you know what? You just a fucking kid, okay? Don't let me have to call the cops on your ass. I said, wait a minute, what? At one point, Kanan had caught his ass and said, listen, there's a lot of the motherfuckers that got put down by kids, okay? And I said, oh. I said, now see, as soon as he would have threatened you, Mr. Um, Kanan, that should have been the moment where you put in your mental faculties that you have to take that nigga out. Okay, you're going to have to take him out. Because no ma'am, no ham, no Sam. Listen, he got to go. He's a liability. You can't trust him. Um, You know, you got that going on. And then Ronnie shows up. Imagine he was already there. And so he finally walked up and Kanan was like, hold on one second. He go over there talking to him. What's up? Yo, it's a party going on out there. I see a little operation. It's a party going on down at Olympics. You need to come through. What? Come through. You ain't asked me if I got anything to do. Come through and walk the fuck away. I said, now, nah, huh? I said, party and Ronnie don't mix. <laughs> Here, like, also, oh, this gonna be the moment that Ronnie gonna be like this. He gonna show up in a Pelly Pelly jacket and not that um JC Penny jacket that he wear all the time. He wear dad clothes, and that's what it is. He wear straight lace dad clothes. So, and I feel like, I feel like this is how he like uh, <clears throat> blend into society, so that when the police see him or whatever, or anybody else see him. Outside of the niggas that know about him, they won't feel that threatened by him. I feel like that's just what it is. You know, he got his glasses. He looked like somebody daddy. He looked like somebody daddy who probably worked on Wall Street. And then when they come back from being in their suits or whatever, and they live up in suburbia, and he got white friends. That's what he looked like because that's how he dressed a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Them slacks, the little khaki slacks, and that jacket, and them glasses, and the little, the little corduroy sweaters and all that stuff. That's what he gives, okay? Besides the fact that he looked mm, scary in the face, that's what he gives off. You know what I'm saying? But he just walked away. And the man, when I tell you, now usually some people, when they walk, they arms move and stuff. When Ronnie walks, his body just stays straight laced and stiff. I said, that is a killer right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I don't even want nobody to be with him because he'll probably choke them out. And, and oh, it'll be a dead body on the scene. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Meanwhile, um... <laughs> Oh, Raquel had the, uh, Detective Howard meet up with her at a certain place. And when he pulled up, <laughs> they was in a car. He pulled the window down and he was like, <sighs> what you want, Raquel? Because remember the last time we saw them together, he said, I'm done with you. Whatever you need to do, you need to find somebody else to take care of that. He was just over it, okay? Like, girl, what you want? And basically asking him about Unique, has anybody talked about him, has the, what the police got on him or whatever. They don't know where he at and all that stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And basically, um, he had to tell him, listen, I had to tell her, uh, he did. Okay. Now it ain't official, but when we went up into that, um, tailor shop or whatever, it, 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 it was so bloody that we saw a steel bat or yeah, steel bat or something, a steel rod that had bone fragments and hair in it. So yeah, the way that that uh, shop looked, yeah, he, he definitely gone. Okay. And she was like, man, and he was like, I thought that was, um, I thought that was good for you. That's your competition, right? And it was like, you know what? You coming over here trying to ask and see what's going on so you uh, can be looking over your shoulder and all that stuff so you could be scared. She said, no, I ain't trying to be scared. I'm trying to be aware, okay? Looking over your shoulder will have you being scared. I'm just being aware of what's probably coming to happen. I said, oh, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. She said it's a big difference, you know? Um... I said, all right. <clears throat> Scared motherfuckers too busy looking over their shoulders so they won't see what's coming. Being aware, niggas who are aware, they see all angles. I said, you know what? That's a word right there. I never thought about it, but hey, you correct. But um, next thing you know, she having problems at the shop because, okay, she got the little shop where she get her hair done. The plumbing is messed up. And Marvin had came over there to help and see what was going on. And they had a little conversation. Oh, yeah, she did qualify. That is, oh, she qualified for the Army. And I'm talking about jukebox. Um, but anyway, 
Marvin had came over there to, you know, see what was good and to talk to her and all this stuff. And she telling him, basically, you know, they had started talking about Unique and all this stuff. And, and, and it was the cops that did it because they pulled around and, and of course, you know, was just looking at and peeping the scene. And now she like, at this point in time, why the fuck am I trying to be something that I'm not? Because he said, I can't believe that you still out here thinking that you're not going to be up in this game no more. She said at one point, I believed it too. But you know, everybody's good at something. This is what the fuck I'm good at. So why don't I just go back to it? She go over there and visit um with Tony Zanza. I said, what? And she back in the game. He said, listen, at one point, he was like, listen, girl, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because you one minute you in, one minute you out, one minute you in, one minute you out. He said, listen, okay. I'm going to go ahead and let you come back in, but I'm going to give you a try. But the last time, this going to be the last time because the only way that you're going to come out, you know how it is. And I said, basically, death. That's just how it is. You in it for life right, now, right about now. And I said, oh, so Rock is back in the game. It only took six episodes. <laughs> it only took six episodes. So then we get to the club, right? Um, Little party going on, whatever, up in the club. Uh, Kanan is there. He comes there with Jukebox and Jukebox got Aisha, right? I feel bad for Jukebox, all right? Because at this point, I don't know if Aisha was supposed to be brought on to be like her friend, like not girlfriend, but just a girl that's a friend. Like she needs feminine energy around her besides rock. But it seemed like she has feelings for Aisha, and we can't figure out, at least I can't, whether or not Aisha had some a, some little bit of feelings for her on the same level that uh, uh, a jukebox possibly could have. But she also digging Kanan because every time Kanan comes around, they're linking up like they're they're by each other and they're giggling with each other. We saw a jukebox in the freight elevator standing in the back like, uh, you know, because they was all up on each other. And I was just like, oh, that feels some type of way. And and, and I feel bad for you. You know, it, it, it's just like, damn, can a girl win in that department? Kanan coming through, not necessarily knowing that that's somebody that she got a little interest in or whatever. And she don't want to say nothing. You know, this is in a time where, you know, people ain't all the way out like that. And it's undercover type of stuff or whatever you just don't know so they get there ronnie show up yo you can't i said oh okay and i was like what the fuck you doing here <laughs> ronnie is still dressed the exact same <laughs> i said damn ronnie you couldn't even put on one of you niggas chains no, he couldn't do that. He's still Ronnie Meyer Voorhees up in that piece. Yo, got some people to see you right now. I said, oh, okay. Baby, at one point, uh, 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 Jukebox said, why the fuck are we here? Okay, and it was like, you over here with all these thugsters. I said thugsters, thugsters. I ain't never heard no word like that. I heard thugs, okay, but not thugsters. And then Ronnie was like, Ain't no thugsters here. Baby, at this point, Jukebox said, there go Tom, Big Fat Tony over there. There go so-and-so over there. There go so-and-so over there. All them niggas is thugsters. I said, mm, can you stop saying that? I don't feel like people really said that, but all right. But, uh, you know, Kanan was like, just chill out, chill out. And see, the thing of it is, at one point, Kanan was on the dance floor with Aisha, and they was just getting it in. I said, what is going on? I please don't make this a triangle. Please don't make this a triangle. And you know, she didn't want um she wanted them to leave and all that stuff. But then Ronnie came over there after he got introduced to Snaps and um, you know, <clears throat> Pops. You know, Ronnie came over there, the heads want to see you. I said, Ooh, all right. And so at this point, they sat down and basically was talking to him. They want to fund his operation, but they want to give him more stuff, okay? And already they want to use him because he already got an operation that's up and going. And um, it was like, you know, I thought you'd be over there with Rock or whatever. If I was with Rock, would you even think I'd be here? <laughs> Fuck rock. I said, what? And then everybody else was like, yeah, fuck rock. And then he go, uh, he go Kanan with his drink.
Yeah, fuck rock. I was sitting here like, listen, I don't give a damn, okay? Maybe it's just me. And this is what we realized. There's no going back in no hope for Rock and Canaan. Now, we already kind of realized that, but I just get to feel like I could say certain things about my mama, about my people, but bitch, you ain't going to say that shit, okay? You are not going to sit in front of my face and say, fuck Rock, fuck this. And then I'm going to just sit there and let you say that shit and agree with you. No, that's still my motherfucking mama. I say that behind closed doors and whatever, but you're going to respect me in front of my face when it comes to her. And once he let them say that shit and he just sat there and smiled with it, not no uneasy smile, a smile of agreement, agreement. I was like, damn, he really hate that bitch. <laughs> he really hate that bitch. He let them say, fuck rock. God damn. So now they finna be working together. And at one point, Rock was over there, uh, not Rock, but um, Kanan was over there at Famous Place. You sleeping on Famous motherfucking mattress on the floor. And Ronnie knocking on that door like a fucking serial killer. Okay, who knocks like that and don't say who they are? Just keep on knocking. And then he finally opened up the door and he was like, it's time to get to work, nigga. I said, what? He put that duffel bag on the um, thing, and, and he opened it up, and it was hammering like kilos of hammerons up in there. He took one of them out, and he pushed it up in his chest like that. I said, now, see, we're going to have to have a conversation. You don't need to be this damn aggressive with me, okay? Now, all you had to do was unzip it and show it to me and place that shit down on the damn table. You did not have to throw my left lung out, okay? You didn't have to do all of that, you know? I was just like, damn, Ronnie, you just, wow, Okay? He's, he's, he's crazy. Meanwhile, we got Lou over there just drinking his life away. Lou was in the car, and he's fucked up. And I'm like, Lou, what are you about to do? Next thing you know, we see him sitting in somebody's chair. I said, we in therapy? He's sitting in the chair, and he like, I want to do it. It's like, I really tried to get in between him, and I tried to stop it. And I just couldn't stop it. It was like, she made me do it, and it's like, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, because Scrap is dead, and I killed him, and I did all that and everything. And it's just like, I couldn't stop it, and that's on me, and that's on me. And I, I'm sitting here like, who the fuck is you talking to? Bitch, why is he at Scrap's mama house? Talking to Scrap mama. About the fact that Scrap was not, he didn't commit suicide like they already knew he didn't. But yes, he was taken out. And he telling them everything. And I was sitting here like, oh my goodness, Lou. Lou, you was one of the ones that I love so much on this show, okay? You the ones I ain't really had no bad feelings about. But now you done fucked up. You done fucked up, okay? And it's time for you to go. I'm sorry. You done made us. You, you, you didn't. Oh. Now they saying in the next week's episode that she finna go to the cop. Thank goodness they got Detective Howard with there. Okay, because ain't no telling how this will go. Lou just finna mess up everything just because he can't get a handle of his goddamn emotions. Oh, my goodness. Baby, that was power. Uh, Raising Kane. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Goddamn, Lou.